Hello, this is Virginia from Team 300 and welcome to the color segment of the Peplum Punk. Now before we get into coloring, let's talk about the formulation as well as the sectioning for the Peplum Punk. We're going to have 5AB with 10 volume, 5C with 20 volume, 7C with 30 volume. I color coded the diagram just for you. You see the 5AB is going to be everything below the parietal ridge. Notice the sectioning is the same from the Peplum Punk that Tiffany just rocked out. You can see the 5C in the interior and the 7C further in the interior. We're going to blur this together and I'm going to show you just how to do that. So let me show you what it looks like. As you can see, same sectioning as the Peplum Punk haircut clean sectioning. This is going to give you control and this is going to give you that master finesse and separate you from the colorist next door. Now we're going to get started applying the color. I also would like to mention this is chromatics that we are working with. Our doll here has already been prepped with pre-art as well as hair cleansing cream. It's very essential that you do that prior to the service to ensure that you're going to get the best result. Also, no dump and pour. Make sure you're using the oil cream developer with the chromatics tube and you're measuring. You can use a scale or you can use a measuring cup to ensure accuracy. I'm going to start with our first section here, applying 5AB, as you see right here. Just outlining at the parietal ridge. This is applied root to ends, staying clean. Now it's time for the really fun part. We're going to start with subsection one. This is going to be a blurring technique. Now as you guys know with chromatics you do need to take very small subsections to ensure even saturation. However, I'm going to show you a way that you can practice this technique without having to take those small sections, ensuring that you get even saturation. I have section one. I'm going to over direct it all the way back to where it's pretty much flat to the head. My brush is loaded with product and I'm really going to pound the product into the hair. Now, since I've done that part, I'm going to flip it and over direct it the other way and really pound that into the hair. The more pressure, the better. Trust me, it's not going to be uncomfortable for your client. They usually like a little bit more pressure than what you give them. I want to show you. If you see any kind of little sm spots that you missed, that's all right. You can just cross check the other way and just really fill it in, just really quick, just to make sure that you are evenly saturated. That pounding really helped, didn't it? So now that my brush is pretty much clean, I'm just gonna really blur that in to zone two. I've applied the 5AB with 10 volume to zone one. Now I'm going into the zone two with the 5C and 20 volume. Starting a little bit below where I've blurred, I'm really going to press that color in. It's the same, somewhat of the same technique that I just used, except for instead of it being flat to the head, it's flat to my head, my hand, so that I can really apply that pressure and allow it to penetrate. Same thing here. I'm going to flip it to this side and really pound it in. Turn it vertically and blur. We don't want any lines. We want blurred lines. Any Robin Thick fans out there?
now that we've blurred zone one and zone two together, we're going to blur a little bit into zone three so that we can go into our 7C with 30 volume. So turning your brush vertically and just blurring. It should go from seeing product visibly to barely seeing anything at all. It's like more of a shine that it has. So now that we have our 5AB in zone one, blurred into zone two with the 5C, we're gonna go in on the ends with the 7C. Going a little bit below where we blurred the line, really pounding it into the hair. And then going in vertically to blur them even more. Section is done. One thing that I love about chromatics is that where you put that color, it's gonna stay where it's at, so there's no need for foils. We're gonna go into our second subsection. Again, clean hands. Five AB, over directing the hair back to where it's flat against the head. Zone one, really applying that color to the scalp. And you turn it vertically, it's gonna give you even more tension. Same thing here. I'm gonna separate just to make sure I have even saturation throughout. Now you notice that I didn't do that in zone two or zone three, which is mostly because the widest part of the section is at the base. Blur. Now we're going into zone two with the 5C and 20 volume. A little bit up below the blur line, really pounding that into the hair. Turn it vertical for more pressure to make sure that we get it saturated. I'm gonna turn her a little bit just so you can see. If you need to reload, you can definitely do so. Turning it vertically, really pounding that into the hair spreading it across my hand just so I can get saturated and blurring the lines. Now that we have zone two done in the second in the second subsection, we're gonna do the ends. Just for time's sake, so I'm not flipping back and forth. If I end on one side, I'm just gonna start on that side with applying and then flip it back over so I can continue to work in in sync and leave it. I'm going to continue each of the other four subsections and then we're gonna get to the fringe. Now we're ready to color our fringe, but before we color our fringe, notice that there's no color on the skin. We wanna make this as much of a pleasant experience as possible. Also notice that I did not reload the brush again when I went to blurring. When I turned it vertical, I just left what was on there because we don't want to have product on top of product. We're not gonna have a blurring effect. So make sure you just flip your brush vertical, do not reload, and blur. Another thing is, is we did the fringe last because we don't want this hair to be in the customer's face. We wanna keep it clean and we wanna keep them comfortable. Of course, you can get on your iPad or your netbook and read. We want it to be pleasurable. We want you to enjoy it and relax. So now we're getting into the fringe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the front of the hairline just so I can keep this out of the face. Notice I'm, I'm taking my time, but I'm moving also at a steady pace, making sure that I get every last little hair. We have those baby hairs that sometimes we miss. 
and then really pounding in. I'm outlining my section just for control so each section can stay on its own. It was the same thing that I did with the other subsections. Now in this section, you can take smaller sections. If you're going to do that, lay it over and out of the customer's face. Applying from zone one, zone two, to zone three. Really pounding that color into the hair. You can use two fingers so that you can ensure pressure so that the product is actually penetrating into the hair shaft. And I'm going to continue working in small sections until the entire fringe is completed. All right, now that we have Esperanza completely colored, I named her, we're gonna allow her to process for 35 minutes at room temperature. Do not apply heat or use a color processor. People tend to do this thinking that it's gonna allow the process to go faster. All it does is unstabilize the molecules. Do not apply heat. Just sit there, give her a magazine, give her a drink, let her chill out, read her nook, and let her process. Another thing that I would like to mention with this coloring technique, this just does not have to apply to this cut at all. You can do this with any type of layered cut, medium, long, whatever you wish, and you can create your own peplum with the color technique. Now if we've created a rockin' cut that can be worn classic, or rocked out and a rocked out or classic color technique that can be applied on short, medium, or long hair. I challenge you to get out there, try it, be bold, be beautiful, be brave, peplum out!